Well, well, well. It seems that there was an interesting decision in the Southern District of Texas on the 22nd of February. In National Coalition for Men versus Selective Service System, the judge ruled that compelling only men to register for the draft was unconstitutional. Either women between the ages of 18 to 26 will be required to register for the Selective Service too, or the Selective Service System will be shut down and there will be no more draft. Like I said, interesting. It's certainly worthy of discussion. I think that it's time for some roasted opinions. Let's look at the background again, shall we? The Selective Service System is what the United States uses for conscripting soldiers. This is an important tool for the Department of Defense in the event of a declared war. See, under the War Powers Act, the President can undertake military actions for up to 60 days without authorization. Those actions can last much longer if Congress authorizes them to do so and provides funding for them. But only Congress can declare a state of war, which empowers the President with a much broader slate of tools to prosecute the military campaign. One of those tools, and a very important one, is the ability to build forces without depending on volunteers only. Drafted service members serve for the duration of the war, plus six months. This is important because mustering sufficient manpower can decide the outcome of such a war. Now, under the Selective Service Act, all men between the ages of 18 and 26 must be registered for the draft. In order to compel this, the Act makes many important federal services dependent upon registration. Those who fail to register are ineligible for college loans, cannot be hired for many government and government contract jobs, become ineligible for federal vocational training, and may even be charged with a felony. Immigrant men under the age of 26 must also register to become citizens if they arrive before age 26 in our country. What's more, if men do not do this by the age of 26, those limitations become permanent. These are stiff penalties, and they apply only to men, which is why the National Coalition for Men sued the Selective Service System. The ruling does not stipulate how the Selective Service must deal with the problem. It merely states that it is unconstitutional. Congress and the Selective Service must now decide how to modify the system or if they will appeal the decision. If they appeal, then there is a good chance that this case will be decided by the Supreme Court. Now, recently, the Army in particular has made some big changes. They are desegregating jobs by gender, including combat jobs. Many soldiers don't have a problem with allowing women in combat arms if the women can do the job. Combat arms specialties are difficult jobs, though. They are physically, mentally, and emotionally demanding, and an inability to physically do the job increases the mental and emotional demands associated with the job. Not just for the soldier who can't keep up, but also for the other soldiers in that unit who must do more to compensate. The Army needed to come up with a way to determine if a soldier could meet the physical demands for the job without regard to gender. Because of experiences in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Army also wanted to ensure that their physical fitness programs emphasized combat readiness. Moreover, older soldiers sometimes could not keep up with their younger subordinates, and the Army determined that this was having a negative impact on overall readiness. The solution to all of these problems is the new Combat Physical Fitness Test. This replaces the Army Physical Fitness Test, which has been used for nearly four decades. The test has a different minimum score requirement based on what job soldiers do and does not adjust those standards for age or gender. It sounds more complicated, but as a retired soldier, I can tell you that this standard is actually much fairer. Soldiers can either do their job or they cannot. The Combat Physical Fitness Test checks for physical fitness for the job only and that's fine by me. I personally don't care about a soldier's plumbing or how they choose to use it so long as it does not interfere with completing the job at hand. If the Selective Service ruling stands, then the draft may become universal. Everyone may have to register between the ages of 18 and 26, male and female alike. The change to desegregating combat arms and implementing the combat physical fitness test suggests that the Army knows this and has already restructured their requirements to be a single, fair standard. Again, I'm fine with this. 
even though it will mean that all of my children, not just my sons, will have to register for the selective service. Do I want my kids to have to serve in combat? Um, no. Just, no. I love my children very much. I pray that they never face the choice of volunteering or taking their chances with the draft. That would mean that the United States is in a declared war, and a lot of American lives would be at risk besides those of my kids. I didn't put on the uniform for over two decades because I love war. I put it on because I wanted to make sure that America was safe, and to help to provide the great military strength which America uses to prevent wars. I volunteered so that others would never be drafted. But if the draft is to remain a tool for use during a declared war, then there must be registration for that draft. I don't see why that registration should be limited to just one gender. Do you? There are many more jobs in the Army than just combat arms, and those jobs are ably done every single day by both male and female soldiers. Every soldier who isn't fit enough to serve in combat may still be fit to serve as a mechanic, a truck driver, a personnel clerk, a cook, a logistician, or any one of the nearly 200 non-combat arms jobs in the Army. Every person that does one of these jobs will free up a soldier who can serve in a combat arms job from being assigned in one of those non-combat jobs. In the Army, that is what soldiers call a force multiplier. I realize, though, that I am different from many people. I am a retired soldier. I see things through the lens of that experience. So I asked some people young enough to be registered for the draft about this. While most agree that men and women should be treated equally, many also told me that they think that the draft should be abolished. The selective service is an uncomfortable bit of forward planning, like a prepaid funeral. I have experienced war, and I don't ever want to be in such a war that we need to draft soldiers. I would prefer that we resolve our differences with other countries at the negotiating table. Still, I know that if we cannot defend ourselves on the battlefield and defeat the enemy there, then there is little chance that those who are not yet our enemy and yet not friendly to us will come to the table to negotiate. Countries do not act in pure benevolence. They act in enlightened self-interest. While our military is a huge expense, maintaining it helps to create the enlightened self-interest in other nations just as the power of our economy does in other ways. Unfriendly countries see the strength of our military and the power of our economy and know that we can defeat most threats without even declaring war. They know that those who could oppose us effectively on the battlefield would find themselves running out of supplies and equipment just as our production of supplies and equipment was kicking into high gear. They have seen America building up its military strength further during a war more than once, all the while continuing to do a brisk amount of regular trade with friendlier nations to sustain the national and global economies. There isn't another nation in the world that can do that currently. China, the second largest economy in the world, is dependent upon trade with the U.S. to sustain their rapid growth, and they know it. The European Union represents a similarly sized economy to ours as well, and they likewise know that they cannot muster the military strength that we can without crippling their economy. The Europeans built their economic community on the strength of their ties with America, both through trade and through NATO, and that's what it really comes down to in the end. The Selective Service makes sure that those nations keep coming back to the negotiating table. We must retain it, which means that this ruling is huge. If we're going to be a nation of equal opportunities for all, then all must likewise share the liabilities equally. That must include the liability for military service and the penalties for failing to register with a selective service. Of course, this won't address every issue of unequal treatment in America, but it's a big step in the right direction. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours, and then check out my playlist and these channels I have subscribed for more great content. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and make sure that you ring the notification bell. 